Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at blood vessels, arteries and arterioles, capillaries, veins and venules, and then we'll finish with a summary. So the blood vessels are basically the tubes that run through the transport system and in which blood is transported. So the vessels that are closed in a closed loop allow the blood to be pumped at a high enough pressure so that the flow is high enough to deliver cells all of the nutrients they require. So the high pressure allows the delivering of nutrients and removing waste products to be as efficient as it possibly can. So remember we're talking in this case about a closed system where the vessels are completely shut off from all of the tissues and the blood within those tubes stays inside the tubes all the way through the circuit. And you can think of blood systems as a kind of road system where the motorways represent the larger vessels and as they branch off they become smaller and smaller and then eventually they rejoin to join a large motorway again and it's kind of like a complete road network. So the circulatory system has five different types of vessels that you need to be aware of. Obviously in the centre we have the heart, which isn't a vessel in itself, but it's the pump of the system. The heart sends blood out first into arteries. So arteries always go away from the heart, and as arteries become smaller they become arterioles. Eventually arterioles become small enough that they turn into capillaries, which is where the exchange happens. Capillaries rejoin up to form small vessels as blood is now returning to the heart, and these vessels are called venules. And as the venules join together and form larger vessels, these are the veins. And eventually the veins bring blood back to the heart to be pumped off again. The only difference is that with the pulmonary circulation going to the lungs, the veins are still the vessels coming back to the heart and the arteries always go away. So the artery from the heart to the lungs is carrying deoxygenated blood to the lungs. And as the oxygenated blood returns to the heart, it's a vein because veins always go towards. So as long as you remember that arteries go away, veins go towards, that should help clear it up. But these are the five types of vessel that you can see. And each of these types of vessel is adapted slightly differently to the different roles based on how far away they are from the heart. So arteries have a particular feature because the blood that's arriving at the arteries is very high pressure and the heart isn't very far away. However, the veins are very far from the heart now because they've gone around the whole body and through the capillaries to reach the veins. So these have certain features to help that flow get back to the heart as quickly as possible. So they're all adapted to do slightly different things based on how far they are from the heart. And all blood vessels have some features in common. They all have a smooth, thin inner tube or inner layer of cells. And this inner layer of cells, which is in contact with the blood, is called the endothelium. So here we've got a general blood vessel here. And the blood is flowing through the middle. And the layer of cells that surrounds the blood on the very inside is called the endothelium. What surrounds the endothelium varies depending on which type of vessel you're talking about. So once blood has been pumped away from the heart, it first enters arteries, which then become smaller as arterioles. So the arteries carry the blood away from the heart, so it's always in a way direction, and it does so at high pressure. The reason it's at high pressure is because the heart has just squeezed itself to squeeze the blood out, therefore the blood here is at the highest pressure point. It's literally just arrived into the vessels and it's going to be very high pressure. So it has to have features to deal with this high pressure. So in order to deal with it, it has thick artery walls, which you can see in this diagram. We have the endothelium in the middle, as with all blood vessels, which is pretty much constant. And then what we have is this thick wall surrounding the endothelium, which is able to withstand a very high pressure, which is being forced upon those walls. There are certain layers in this thick wall that you need to be aware of. So there's elastic tissue, which surrounds the endothelium, and the elastic tissue is very important because it can expand and contract, and therefore it can absorb some of those shock forces being forced upon the wall. Surrounding this, there is some smooth muscle, and the smooth muscle just helps to keep the artery generally open and controls the diameter. In the final layer on the outside, there's a thick layer of collagen, which is a very tough, abundant protein in the body, and the collagen basically is there to withstand forces and to keep the artery nice and strong. So the total combined layers make the wall very thick, and can withstand the high pressure of the blood. Arterioles have the same general structure as arteries, but they're smaller, and they have generally a thinner muscle layer and a thinner elastic layer. This is because as the blood travels down the vessels, the pressure will be dropping as the blood makes contact with the wall and friction slows it down. So the arterioles, which are smaller, don't need as much elastic or smooth muscle tissue around it because the blood pressure is decreasing. The arterioles are important in controlling their diameter, so the smooth muscle around the arteriole can constrict, 
and this can limit the diameter of the vessel. So as the muscle constricts, the diameter becomes smaller, and this is important in controlling flow. So for example, if you imagine here, we've got flow to the kidneys in a normal circumstance, but here what's happened is the vessels have become thinner, because if you imagine the arterioles smooth muscle layer, if it constricts, it will narrow the diameter, and therefore less blood can flow through the vessel. And so here we have thinner vessels reducing the flow. So arterioles are very important in controlling flow. For example, when you're carrying out strenuous exercise, most of the flow is retained to go to important organs like the brain, the heart, the lungs and muscles, and it directs flow away from unimportant organs at that time, like the intestines and the kidneys. Eventually, blood reaches the smallest vessels in the body, which are known as capillaries. And this is where the exchange happens in all of the tissues. So they have very thin walls, and the wall is only one single layer, and this is the single-celled layer of endothelium. So the tube itself in the capillary has no outer walls or muscle or elastic tissue, it's just one sheet of endothelium. And the reason it's very thin is because then we can have oxygen going out to the cells, or we can have oxygen coming in at the alveoli. We can also have CO2 leaving at the alveoli, or CO2 going in if we're at the cells in the body. The lumen, or the opening, is very, very narrow, and it can squeeze red blood cells against the endothelium to improve the transfer of oxygen. So it's very narrow, so the diffusion distance of oxygen, or CO2, is very, very small. And therefore, gas exchange and nutrient exchange is at maximum efficiency. The blood at this point now has increased resistance because a lot of the blood is now in contact with the walls of capillaries as it enters the tissues, and this slows down the flow of blood, reduces the pressure, and therefore saves a lot of damage. So the blood is initially at high pressure through the arteries and arterioles, but as it spreads out in the capillaries, the blood pressure drops, the flow drops, and therefore the damage to the walls of the capillary and the leakage is going to be reduced. So this is a safety mechanism. Finally, once the blood has undergone all the exchange it needs to with the tissues, the blood needs to come back to the heart. Because it's now full of carbon dioxide, the oxygen needs replenishing, and some of the nutrients have gone as well so it needs to go back and refresh. So the veins carry blood back to the heart, but it's at low pressure, because now the pressure of the blood dropped so much over the capillaries, and there's no pump inside the capillaries, only at the heart. So the pressure is now very, very low. And this low pressure flow happens, first of all, through the venules, and then at the veins. So the vein walls aren't very thick, because they don't need to withstand much blood pressure at all, but the lumen is very, very wide to maximise the amount of flow. So it's trying to get the blood back to the heart as quickly as possible, so it makes the lumen very, very wide, and the wall is very, very thin. They do have a feature that's only found in veins, which are the valves, and these ensure that the low pressure blood only flows in the right direction. So obviously a lot of veins in the body are going to be down in our feet, for example, and the gravity wants to pull the blood downwards, so getting it back up to the heart is going to be very difficult. And especially when the blood pressure is very, very low, it's going to want to flow backwards. Therefore, they have these valves which keep the blood from flowing in the backwards direction because as soon as the blood goes through that valve, it cannot go back through the valve until the next pump, in which case it will go through the next valve, so it keeps it flowing in one direction. As well as having valves, the veins are often surrounded by skeletal muscles, like in the leg or arm, and when these muscles contract, they compress the veins in a sort of massaging motion, pushing the blood along and back to the heart. So if you can imagine you're carrying out exercise, your leg muscles are working very, very hard, and as they contract, they squeeze blood from the outside, and they do so squeezing blood through the valves, and then the one direction flow keeps them flowing back to the heart. The venules are the smaller versions of veins, and they don't have any valves. The valves are only present in the veins, which are larger, and they deliver blood from the capillary beds to the veins. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face, and together, let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.